Hello everyone, Anton here. A couple of days ago, I posted a video about beating a raid in hard difficulty in 25 minutes. This run seemed pretty impressive to me and a lot of you guys because I did most of the fights pretty normally without using any traps that would make it completely broken. But yesterday, another runner named Prophetos hit me up with plans he made a long time ago to do it in hardcore and twice as fast. He came up with 90% of the build we're gonna use, but I modified it to make it easy to build and extremely fast and safe to execute. By the way, the methods used in this speedrun do not involve glitches, but they exploit the raid spawning mechanics, so it is still considered set seed glitchless. Anyway, this is beating a Minecraft hardcore raid in 10 minutes. So the setup for this run is gonna be actually very simple. And the first thing that I'm gonna to want to do is make a fletching table. The reason why I want to specifically make a fletching table um, is because I want to have a bow and arrow as safety. It's not required, but it's much safer because basically you're gonna to want to build a tower for the raid and sometimes um, mobs can go outside your tower, they can kind of glitch out the tower and you're gonna to need to uh, use the bow and arrows to kill them. Plus, uh, the villager that you're gonna want to use for bow and arrow is the villager that you're gonna want to use for um, triggering the raid. All that you need to trigger a raid is approach a single villager next to a single workstation. So what I'm gonna actually do, and that you're gonna see in uh, a few minutes, is that I'm gonna capture a villager and bring it, bring it outside of the village. So only this villager is considered for the raid and I'm not actually using the main village that we see here. So what I'm doing at the start of the raid is just blowing up some houses to get stone and wood. The wood is gonna be used to trade with the Fletcher and the stone is gonna be used to build our tower. Um, I'm gonna leave all the villagers alone, I'm gonna leave the golem alone. Uh, and I'm gonna keep blowing up houses. I placed the fletching table so that I could um, lower a villager here. And unfortunately here, there was not any villagers on this side of the village, so I was gonna reset, but then I heard the villager in this house, so I broke his workstation, and it was gonna turn into a fletcher here. Um, it directly had the good trade, I wanted, I wanted it to have the trade with a uh, sticks plus arrows, uh, which is cool because I'm gonna be able to get emeralds from the sticks and then get arrows with the emeralds that I just got. Uh, and it's gonna allow me to unlock the trade for a bow. And now I can just put the villager in the boat and I can leave. So we're just leaving to the ocean so that we don't let any space for the raid to spawn anywhere other than where I want I want it to spawn, uh, which is going to be on a tiny platform that we will build. Um, so I'm just going to boat away. It needs to be um, far enough from the village that it's not going to consider it from part of this village. And I actually need to make it far enough away from the pillager outpost so that the pillagers that are going to follow me in the water, because some of them do, are not going to be considered as part of the raid, otherwise I'm going to have to snipe them from very far. So it needs to be quite far away from the, the outpost. Uh, I'm starting to build the platform, so it just requires the workstation here, that's where your villager is going to be. Um, and the way that I'm going to use to make the villager enter that tower faster is uh, using that little uh, setup here, where it's going to just slide down with the water. Uh, and then I can enclose it. And I need to make it up one block because it, it needs the um, workstation to be higher. Uh, and so I'm just gonna use water to elevate the villager. And now it's fully trapped. And I can start building my tower, uh, which is where I'm gonna stand during the raid. And I make it four tall so that um, ravagers cannot hit me. Because I tested this tower with a three toll, and when I was down in the hole, the the ravagers were still able to hit me through it, which was very unfortunate. Plus, I feel like the fact that it's that I'm um, 
more down uh, I'm less high. <laughs> uh, it makes it so that um, evokers spawn less vexes. I feel like uh, I haven't I haven't actually like studied how it works, but I it, it's just a feeling. So the platform that I'm building around it is so that the mobs do not fall from the platform, and I can just go back and dig down. Um, I'm gonna place a trapdoor. Basically, you will understand what it does later, and I'm just gonna be able to exit the tower for now to go get um, a pillager with a banner. And I'm building it in a way that I'm gonna be able to enter my tower uh, as fast as possible uh, before the raid starts, because obviously you don't want the raid to start while you're still outside the tower, so you need to be very quick at uh, be able to re-enter it. Um, and now all I need is to find a pillager with a banner, which honestly was the main cause of free sets in previous attempts, uh, just not finding a pillager with a banner uh, to start the raid. And so I'm just gonna look for one for a minute. Um, it was not actually the best time, but it was decent. Sometimes I, I get one on the coast, which is like perfect, obviously. And I'm gonna be able to leave the pillager outpost around uh, 6.20. Um, on my previous attempts that could have been sub 10, I uh, left the tower at around 6 minutes. So 6.20 is not too bad, but it's kind of behind on the pace. I'm gonna need to, uh, to get very lucky with the raid itself. And yeah, from this perspective, you can tell that the tower, the, the build, is extremely simple. Like, there is nothing complicated about that build. It's extremely fast and easy to build, there's not much you need to, uh, to remember. And I'm just gonna re-enter my tower fast. I'm breaking those blocks so that mobs from the raid cannot spawn on them. And I'm just here and I'm gonna use lava to kill the raid. Pretty much how it works is all the raiders are gonna spawn on that stone platform that I make. And by placing the lava here and having a trapdoor, I can place the lava. It's gonna spread around and not spread down towards me because of the trapdoor. So it's absolutely perfect, and we already dealt with the first uh, wave of the raid, so it's absolutely insane. It's not very uh, entertaining at all to watch the raid itself, but the way it's built is very interesting in my opinion. Like, obviously the raid itself is going to be extremely quick, and it's not going to require any skill. It's literally just placing the lava at the right time and killing the whole raid. The only thing that can happen um, so obviously witches are immune to fire, so you're gonna have to tower back up to kill the witches. Um, also, ravagers take a long time to die, so you need to wait for them. And there is also an occurrence of if a mob spawns um, in, on the back of the ravager, sometimes it will be able to escape the tower after the ravager is killed. So that's when you're gonna need the bow and arrow to kill that uh, one mob that escaped the tower, but like in the best case scenario that would not happen and I definitely think that if you get the perfect execution and RNG on everything uh, You can probably finish the whole thing in 8 minutes and 30 seconds, I would say um, I think that would be the limit of the category, but I'm not sure um, So I'm gonna kill the witches by hand again as I explained I'm using a different type of block to tower up, so I don't accidentally mine the block that's right above the villager's head, because otherwise the run would pretty much, pretty much just be dead. <laughs> Let's not uh, lie about that. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna keep killing the waves. There is not much to comment on, just uh, the fact that after you hear um, Ravager die, do not do not take the lava right away because there might be a troop on it that will fall in the lava later. So this troop actually, so this mob actually, um, as I explained, um, escaped because it was on the Ravager. So I just used the bow here to be able to uh, kill it and I'm going back down in my hole. Uh, we're currently at 9 minutes 20 and we've done 5 waves already. So there's only 2 more waves to go and those are the waves that have the evokers. But fortunately evokers just die very fast with the lava as well, and as long as I'm staying down in that hole they can't spawn vexes, or they won't try to spawn vexes, and 
the wave number six was extremely fast. It was maybe <laughs> less than 10 seconds. So I'm very happy about that build. I'm really, really happy. Um, and here everything is gonna die too. Um, there's just gonna be a few witches left. You can tell by the, the raid bar that not everything is dying currently. I'm gonna wait before I remove the lava so that the troop on top of it dies. And at the end I'm gonna remove the lava and be able to kill the very last troop and get Hero of the Village in hardcore difficulty in 10-15. That's absolutely insane, and I'm very happy about the way the category evolved in such a short amount of time. Like two days ago, we were at 25 minutes, and it looked okay. It didn't look super optimized, but it looked very okay. Um, and I'm definitely very happy with the time of 10 minutes and 15 seconds. As I mentioned, I definitely think that it can get taken down to an 8 minutes something, but yeah, I'm still happy. Anyway, this was beating a Minecraft Hardcore Raid in 10 minutes. I hope that you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.